All right. So now I'm going to demonstrate uh, some other EMF fields. Uh, just, just about anything that is electronic is going to create an electromagnetic field, or uh, as this thing likes to call it, electromagnetic radiation. And that uh, field is radiating out, I assume. I'm not a electro uh, scientist or whatever they call it. Um, but it's radiating out, and the antenna is in its way. So that field is moving, and this conductor, the antenna is a conductor, it's uh, getting the energy. And it's uh, converting it into DC power. Right now it's just AC power between the antenna and the ground. And uh, it's just converting it to uh, DC energy. Here, I'll show you. I'm going to switch this to AC. Show you what the AC power is here is by connecting to the antenna and the ground. All right. So we're at AC. We're at 1 volt right now. See what happens when we use the Wimshurst. All right, so it starts fluctuating. Goes up, goes down. But for the most part, we're getting 1.2. It's, oh, excuse me. It's producing some voltage there. And AC voltage is fluctuating. That's not sure why, it's probably just the waveform that's being created. Let me arc this out. Alright. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we've done that, I'm going to show you uh, an example of what happens when you turn on a fluorescent light. Now, this is uh, basically something I discovered. I was, I was finding that this unit uh, was working better at night. These circuits would get much higher voltage, they'd store faster go up much higher, like up to like 20 volts sometimes. And, uh, but then in the daytime, uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't perform as well. I couldn't figure out why. Did a bunch of research. I found out that I figured, well, maybe the radio uh, signals are stronger at night. Uh, like ham radio operators will often uh, do their uh, operations at night because they can get further signals. They can receive and send signals from much farther away because they can bounce it off the ionosphere. But in the daytime, you can't do that. So uh, what, what actually happens is, uh, and during the daytime, is radio stations will turn up their power because they can't bounce it off the ionosphere. But at night, FCC, they have to turn it down. Otherwise, they would interfere with uh, other radio stations in the area at the same frequency. So that's actually the opposite of what was happening. I was, I was experiencing more power at night and less during the day. And I live out in the middle of nowhere out in the country, so the radio frequencies out here really aren't that strong. I have a hard time getting any good stations at all. So I, I was perplexing. Well, why is this working better at night and not during the day? And then one time I was testing and uh, I was checking the voltage and it was just starting to get dark. So I was testing things out. It started getting dark. So I went over and uh, t turned a bunch of lights on. All of a sudden, this thing started performing really well. And then it dawned on me. What was happening is this, this thing was sitting really close to a, uh, a fluorescent light. <clears throat> and when you turn that light on, poof, voltage started going up. And I'm going to demonstrate that right now. So you can see uh, we're wavering here on this AC voltage. I'm going to go back to DC. Uh, just for this little test. Well, actually, let's leave it on AC for now and just see what we get. We're getting one volt or so AC, just ambient energy. Yeah, which is pretty good. That's not bad. It's just a little antenna here. It's a little radio antenna and my house ground. All right, so now I'm going to turn on one of these fluorescent lights. Now, this is a really old fluorescent light. Uh, but as you can see, immediately, let me try and change the uh, brightness here of my, my video, hold on. Uh, sorry about that, I had to adjust the uh, exposure of my camera just so you could uh, see the voltage change here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but now we're up to 3 volts. And this thing's not going off, but if I get it close enough to my uh, fluorescent light over here, 
it sure will. And I don't know if you can see, I'll show you. I've got my antenna going right around the fluorescent right. Hold on one second. Alright, sorry about all the switching around there folks. I gotta keep changing the exposure for you to be able to see the voltage here. And uh, there you have it, 3.4 volts. Adjust this antenna around a little bit and changes it a little bit, not much. Bring it over here by my Windsor's. Stick it around there. See, we're lower now. And combine that with a little bit of Windsor's action. See what we get. Now you can see power starts to go up. Creates a crazy waveform, I'm guessing. And let's, there we go, don't want to get shocked. All right. So that's uh, one fluorescent light. And this thing's old school. This thing's so old. I just had it in my shed. And since I noticed this little light phenomenon, I decided to pull it out and test, you know, test it. And sure enough, you can charge these circuits, you know, off a fluorescent light. Not just a fluorescent light, you could use anything that's got EMF. You could you could wrap it around a uh, toaster oven and it would charge these circuits, all right? So, I've got another fluorescent light here. It's a aquarium light. I'm going to I'm going to shift that one on. See if we get more voltage. There we go. The antenna is also wrapped around this little guy. Which is uh, my aquarium light. And just put it back there. You can see it's going up even more. So that's the AC voltage. Alright, so let's switch over to DC and see what these little circuits have stored up. Get an idea. And, alright, what do we have here? 1.6 volts stored up here. I'm going to let that charge up for a little bit. And see what we get. 1.7 is charging away here. And that's on the larger uh, circuit, which doubles the voltage, which actually makes it perform a little bit better because you're trying to light up an LED and the extra voltage uh, kind of helps out. Alright, so I'm going to run this a little bit, see if we can crank up uh, the storage on that guy, see if it'll increase. Oh, yeah, we're up to two already. And I apologize, I wish I had a multimeter with a backlight so you could see it better. But I don't, I do have some multimeters that have backlights, but they're not auto-ranging. And for this application, it's nice to show it auto-ranging, so I don't have to switch back and forth all the time. So... See, yeah, the fluorescent lights, we got the wind search, throwing a spark. Just go, so see that better. And we're up to 2.5 volts, 2.5 volts. Just keep cranking on this thing, get it up there, see what happens when we stop it. Alright, let this guy out because I don't want to get shot. Until I've been shocked before. <laughs> All right, so we're up to 2.79 volts on this little unit here. It's cranking away. I'm going to hit the uh, light here in a minute and release it. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to turn off some of these lights so we can see that light better. There goes one and the other. All right. Whoops. Sorry. I don't know if you can see all that. Turned off those lights. The EMF detector went down. And I'm still at 2.86 volts. It's dropping a little bit. Probably because it's connected to the multimeter or something like that. Anyways, I did want to demonstrate the switch and the light. There is some power in there and it should operate the LED. But uh, this little circuit is kind of neat. Like, I can just touch the back of this thing here and my finger operates as the switch. 
uh, just the resistance over my finger and I'll show you here flip it back over so you can see the light and instead of hitting that switch I'm just going to touch down here and give you a little show hopefully it'll work I don't know if you can see that but it's turning that little LED off and on just barely there hold on a second Change the exposure. Now you might see it better. Yeah. It's hard to show. There we go. Okay. That's just the conductivity of my skin. Allowing enough juice to pass over that and uh, display the light. Cool, huh? Now I'm going to hit the main switch will give you a nice direct connection. Oh okay. yeah, lights up real nice. Yeah, it's just bleeding the juice out of that uh, those capacitors taking it down lower than what the LED requires. When the LED stops it just it's just going to hold its voltage at that point. Alright.